So right now I'm just playing with the snake hook tool to give you a sense for how that manipulates the model. Uh, and here's the H polish. You can see it's really handy for hard surface stuff and just overall smoothing out things and getting really angular, planar forms uh, while you're working. Uh, next will be the Damien Standard, which is great for uh, just part lines and cutting in wrinkles and things on your model. And normally it cuts in, but if you hold down Alt or Option on a Mac, it will do the inverse. So you can see I'm cutting things in, adding things out, and it's, it's an extremely useful tool. If you look at all these sharks, you can see fins, faces, uh, everything just kind of, that's naturally how things will grow, like your fingers, anything. Um, and snake hook's really handy for just getting that in there from the start, as opposed to the move tool, which might uh, stretch things out uniformly, and then you'll have to go back in later and uh, sculpt all that um, pinch into a point yourself. So this just kind of speeds things up from the start. So right now, at the in the sculpt, we're, we've gotten to a point where we've sort of got all of our main features, but I, I don't feel like it's a strong character yet. So I'm just starting to play and get into specifics, like what does his jaw actually look like? How far apart should his eyes actually be? I like the overall feel of where it's going, but it's just what specifically is this character? Who is he? What, is, what has he been through? And how can we convey that in his overall appearance? But you can see it, just a little bit of noise over everything, and it just starts, again, taking it away from looking just very digital and smooth, clean. I guess most of the stuff in here is to replicate traditional sculpting techniques. Um, in the wettest sculpting room, you'll see these in incredible sculptors like Jamie Bezwarek and all these just masters. And you'll see how they create texture and things in clay. And something like this would be the equivalent of taking a bristle brush and putting a texture over everything and slicking it down with, with alcohol or something. A lot of this, again, is just trying to replicate traditional techniques. And a lot of these shaders are the same thing. Like this is how that sculpture would look if we slicked it with alcohol and made it shiny. And um, So just playing around with some of the other layers, seeing what else we have in there to help sell the form. Toning down some, some of the lighting again. It's one of the things to keep in mind, like you'll get so much stuff out of ZBrush and it's just learning to pick and choose the things that you need. Just kind of kicking back the, the sides so it's a little vignette to sell our character a bit more. It tell, makes Photoshop think that all the layers are flattened and it's creating effect over everything. Whereas normally, normally a color dodge layer needs to be applied on a flattened layer to have it affect all the all the layers um, and react property properly to everything. But this way, just gives you a lot more flexibility and freedom because you can adjust the color dodge on the fly instead of having to commit and flatten everything. Um, just gives you a bit more flexibility.